What is going on guys, Vlad with SolusPLC.com here and today we're going to be talking about a timer instruction which is called the timer on delay. Very, very important instruction which is used quite frequently and for anything that's related to timing. Uh, sequences or any sort of timed events. Now let's look at the example that I have set up here and it's a fairly straightforward example to understand but essentially picture a tank which has been heated up to a certain level and now it needs to go through what's called a cooling cycle so maybe a temperature limit has been exceeded notified through a sensor or maybe the operator started a cooling cycle and so once this cycle begins it needs to run for a certain duration now you've seen me use timers in a couple of previous examples but here we're going to uh dive in a little bit more depth so the timer first of all it is a structure which is a unique structure it's not necessarily a boolean init it's its own uh, unique structure and let's go into monitoring uh, into monitor our cooling cycle timer which is the data structure that i've already set up so as you can see at the bottom here we have that timer i'm just going to expand this a little bit and uh, we will notice a couple of different things here so first of all we do have two different dints so the first dint is going to be that timer that pre or what's uh, commonly known as the preset so the preset essentially holds a value which is an integer of up to until up to until uh, which um, number that timer is going to count so in this case it's going to be in milliseconds and since i have it set at 20,000, this means that the timer is going to count to uh, 20 seconds in real life time now the next integer or dent that we have is the dot acc or the accumulated time so this is where the timer is going to show you as an increase as to which point it has currently counted to. So the preset is essentially going to be a static value which it needs to reach in order to finalize the timer but the accumulated value is going to count up as the timer is of course enabled. Now you have three other bits, so these are all booleans. You have the dot enable dot tt, which is going to be the currently counting, and the done bit, which is when the timer reaches, or essentially when the accumulated value is equal to the preset. Let's go back to the logic and look at the instruction which we have set on. So the timer is not necessarily tied to the T on instruction. It can also be used in T off or um, retentative timer on or a couple of other instructions which we will look at in the next videos. But if you use this T on instruction, that means that whenever this value comes on, the timer begins counting. And so let's observe that in our rung. So if I control T or toggle this bit, you will notice that there's this accumulated value which immediately starts to increment and it will continue to do so until it reaches the preset value of our timer. Now, while it's counting, those three bits are going to be in different states and based on those states you can deduce certain activities so as you've seen there has been this transition where this dot tt bit was on and then that this dot done bit was not on and then vice versa it flipped whenever it finalized so let's dis discuss this a little bit closer so the enable bit will be on whenever the preceding instruction so that this start tank cooling cycle is on this means that the timer or the t on uh, instruction is energized so the enable bit is always going to be on whenever the preceding instructions are active the dot tt or the counting bit is only going to be on whenever this accumulated value is less than the preset and and the timer is enabled therefore it's a very good or efficient way to figure out when the timer is actually in process of counting therefore this is commonly used so for example tank cooling cycle is in process because the timer is of course counting and something is happening as soon as the timer reaches that value as you can see here though this uh, counting bit goes to false and therefore the cycle is no longer in process was which is exactly what you want to see now the done bit is also extremely used in a uh, lot of logic programming and it essentially tells the programmer when the timer has reached that final value uh, which in our case is 20 seconds and of course it only energizes when both of these values are equal and it's going to remain 
uh, at uh, that energized state until something is done about that. Now, the T on instruction is very interesting in terms of once I toggle this back, so if I disable this, you will notice that the accumulated value has gone back to zero. Of course, the timer is not counting and the timer is not done. Therefore, both of these bits de-energize. Now, the other way uh, to reset, so for example, if the cooling cycle is in process, but for whatever reason, the operator needs to reset that value, you can use what's called a reset instruction with the argument, of course, being the cooling cycle. And I actually misspelled that. It's calling, it's cooling, not calling. Uh, but in any case, so our cycle continues. Um, the other thing that you can do with uh, timers which is very interesting is you can use this limit instruction and we haven't looked at it uh, that much in detail but essentially you can test or you can verify what the accumulated value is equal to so you can essentially create segments so what you will notice here is that for from when the timer starts counting to before to right as it reaches 10 seconds i have this tank cooling cycle one enabled so it tells the operator you know maybe a certain um, a certain half or a certain period depending on which limits you set within this instruction uh, you have a certain cooling cycle which needs to for example you need to um, i don't know inject a certain gas inside of that tank to cool it faster and then within the second portion of the full cooling cycle so the cooling cycle as you remember is 20 seconds so from 10 seconds to 20 seconds you have this tank cooling cycle too and of course they can overlap depending on what you specify in those values but essentially there's a way for you to separate into different segments based on the accumulated value so extremely extremely useful uh through the use of these limit instructions and you can use different math comparator comparators as we will see in the pre in the next videos but that's um that's pretty much all there is to that timer on or ton instruction and uh very simple to use but extremely powerful very commonly used in ladder logic in order to time certain events in order to have a start and a finish to a certain event so on and so forth and also very commonly used in debouncing a topic which we will also cover in a separate video thank you guys so much for watching my content if you have any questions on this topic make sure to leave them in the comment section below and if you can spend five seconds of your time liking as well as sharing that video if you've enjoyed it that would mean absolutely the world to me and if you have any suggestions for the channel what kind of hardware software i should be covering then make sure to leave that down there as well see you next time take care bye